world is on fire, no one can save me but you, wear your mask for me, I'll wear mine for you, I never thought I'd stay at home for so long, but I know it's the way to keep us both strong No, I don't want to be the one No, I don't want to be the one To break your heart What a wicked game you play When you make us feel this way What a wicked thing you do Tell us what to do What a wicked game you play Have to stay at home each day What a wicked thing you do Tell us what to do, but I don't want to be the one I'm going to let it break your heart. No, I don't want to be the one I'll give it to you. All right. Hey, everyone. Mr. Pat from the Boys and Girls Club. Hello, when we're to Wahoo. That's the music part of the lesson. Welcome. I want to thank Chris Isaac. That song is called Wicked Game. We just uh, wrote it for today's times. We all feel a little put out by what we're having to do, but it's the correct thing to do as I take care of you and you take care of me. That's the name of the game. We're taking care of each other. So thank you for doing that. Thank you for distancing, wearing your mask, whatnot, and watching out for yourself. Very, very important. Okay. What we're going to do today is more of a um, crafts, arts and crafts thing. We're going to make something using a math concept, a geometry net. That's a flat representation that can fold into a shape. And we're going to treat it, um, we're going to do it and show you how to turn it into like a little gift or whatever for Mother's Day, for a friend, for yourself. But the idea is like a Mother's Day gift. Okay, so here we go. I'm going to show you on the board. I'm going to show you on paper. I'll describe exactly what you need. So let me spin this around first. Let me capture our board here. Okay. So in order to do this, you need paper. And the paper should be as sturdy as you can get it. If all you have is eight and a half by 11, that's fine. If you have a larger size, that makes you have the ability to make different size uh, gift presentation here. Um, I'll give you dimensions if you only have the smaller eight and a half by 11, and you can adjust it if you have a bigger one. If you have colored paper, um, you can use anything the sturdier the better though real flimsy paper probably won't be the best choice you also need a ruler not just a straight edge but something to measure with and you need some sort of drawing tool and at the end of it i can show you hopefully how to use that string art and decorate this a little bit so we'll see what goes on but if you have colored pencils or whatnot that can happen afterwards where you can um, 
get creative with your art. I'm just going to show you the basics. Okay, so you get all your gear together, paper, straight edge, ruler, drawing instrument, pencil is best in case you make a mistake, and then later you can get your colored pencils if you want. Okay. So you've gone, you've gathered everything, you're with me here. So this is your paper. And the most important thing is what you're going to do is basically just draw a square. And you're, I'm going to tell you how big to make it, but you want it to be centered in your paper. You don't want it high, low, left, right. You want it to be in the middle as best you can. So I'm going to use my meter stick and hopefully that can help you with some of the measurements. Okay, I'll use my pretty orange marker here. So what we're going to do is we are going to make a square and if you have size capability you can make it three inches on a side. I'm going to make, make each side two and a half inches and we are going to draw a square. So a square, all the sides are the same, and there's 90 degree angles. So we're going to start with that. So I got a lot of space to work with. I'm going to eyeball right in the middle. And if you look at these, these are your inch markers. So 18, 19, 20, or make it easy. 20, 21, 22. Okay, I'll go from 10. 10, 11, 12. So from 10 to 11 is 1 inch. 11 to 12 is two inches and then halfway between 12 and 13 would be our halfway mark so that would be two and a half inches 10 to 11 11 to 12 and then halfway to 13 so i'm gonna do that okay so starting at 10 going to 12 and a half Okay, if you can go three inches, it makes it easier to find the middle. Okay, so now I'm going to draw the other sides. I want to concentrate on keeping it the same length, and I want to make it go right angle. So I'm going to go up and down, and I'm going to, this time I'm going to be creative. I'm going to put it at the half. This board's a little cumbersome to work with. And I'm going to go down to the 10. Okay. So I'm at the half. I'm going to go straight down to the 10. can kind of look, you can remeasure, adjust if needed, and then you're going to draw the bottom. And you got yourself a square that works. If you're not 100% perfect, we're not going to worry about that. Just going to keep going here. Okay, doing good. So start with your square, do your best to make it all the same. So this gets a little tricky. So what we're going to do next is we're going to find the midpoint of that thing. So the middle of two and a half, if you divide that by two, two divided by two is one. A half divided by two, if you had half a pizza and split it in two, it'd be a fourth of pizza. So what you're going to do is you're going to find one and a fourth inches across. So on your ruler, it gets a little tricky. So if you look here, like from 24 to 25, here's 24. Here's 25. There's one, two, three, four parts here. That first one is one and one fourth. Okay, so I'm going to line this up. I'm going to go right here in the middle. And I'm going to make a dot. 
And I'm going to do the same thing for the other places. Again, you're trying to do your best. You're not going to overly worry. But you should be as close as you can. Whoops. To accurate on that. And last one. Okay. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go straight up from here. So you have to make sure you're not like angled like that. You're going to go straight up and you're going to make a mark three inches above that. So what you're going to do is from each of those, you're going to measure three inches. You're going to try to be straight up when you do it. I'm going to turn this so it makes sense to you guys. So if I'm going from 10 straight up, I'm going to make a mark at 13. Okay. If I'm going out this way, I go straight there and I make a mark at 13. I mean, out this way, I'm upside down, but I figure out I'm going to make a mark at 13. That's three inches. And last one, right here. This time I'm going down. 10 minus 3 is 7, so I'm going to put it at 10 and make a mark at 7, which is my three inch mark. So far, so good. Now you could have drawn a line there. And on some of your things, you might want that line. But if you don't want the line, then what you can do is do it like I did it. If you don't mind the line being there, you can always hide it when you see. What you can do is draw the line part in. Okay, but let me show you what I'm gonna do next. Now I'm going Check it out, from each corner here, I'm going up to this. So I'm gonna go from each corner up to that thing I drew. From the corner to the dot. And you're gonna do that on all of them. Corner to the dot. Okay, it's a lot easier to do on a piece of paper than it is on a whiteboard like this, believe me. So you guys got the easy job. Okay. So that's where you're at. I did one earlier on paper. This is what it looked like. Same basic thing, a little easier to be uh, accurate on paper. You're drawing straight down, less cumbersome. Okay, now, if you want to, you can draw that line. Like I said, you can have a line straight down the middle, but for now, we're gonna leave it just like that. Okay, so that is a flat representation of something that if you cut out, oh, I forgot to tell you, you need another tool. You need scissors. So you're gonna cut this out of your paper. So go get scissors if you haven't done so. No reason for you to, because I never told you. So go get some scissors now. And we're gonna cut very carefully. Pat had to go get his scissors. Here we go. Okay. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this. So hang on a second. So the way you're going to cut is along the outside lines. Okay, so you're going to go ahead and cut. that cut it to the corner keep cutting pretty sure you guys know how to do all this part of it Try to be careful or you got to start again and that's okay because it doesn't take a real long time to make. So it's kind of cool you're actually doing a math thing. Geometry Net, N-E-T. You've probably done these in 5th, 6th, 7th grade for different shapes. Okay, there you go. So you got your star all cut out. Now the last thing you're going to do to see what shape you make is you're going to fold along this edge of the square. So you're going to try to fold carefully like that. Fold carefully. Crease it. Fold carefully. Crease it, pull them back or the ends will bend too. And fold the last one. Okay, so all of them are folded. You made these. And then if you put them all together, you got a pyramid. So this is the net of a pyramid. So this is the size you can make on a regular 8.5 by 11. If you have bigger paper, you can make a bigger one. Okay. So what you can do is you can poke little holes in the top. Okay, just use your pencil or a little poker. You just want a small little puka and then you can tie it together and you can put stuff inside like candy, a treat, or you can cut a like an oval or something on one side and you can put something in people can see. And you end up with something like this. So this was a gift as a thank you gift. Uh, some people gave. They had candy and stuff inside. You can look how they tied on the top. They just used little ribbon through the holes that they made. It looks very attractive. And totally open on what you do. Okay, you can try to you know make it close like that again you can put a little viewing window and then you can hang it you can give it to someone here's a gift it's just a cool thing parents appreciate stuff like this if there's something about you with it and then there's something else cool you can do so I want to show you that so this is the basic thing you made a net geometric net and it folds up to what they call a square pyramid a little bit of math thrown in because the base of the pyramid is square okay and there you go you can there's different kinds this is a square one i won't get into volume and surface area no worries all right so check this out this is kind of a cool it's going to be kind of hard to show but i'm going to do it anyhow because i'm like that okay check this out Let's say you want to get fancy. You can use your colors and you can do any coloring you want. But look at this. Let's say I drew this thing right here. And I drew that line. Now watch this. If I draw lines, I'm gonna make that, I'm gonna erase that and make it a little better. Okay, and then I'm going to fix I'm going to 
fix that other line too. Sorry, thanks for putting up with that. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is that string art deal. So I'm going to pretend like there's all these little lines down here. And there's these lines going up. And I'm going to connect the top up here, right there. It's going to be kind of hard to do without a real fine point, and I don't have one. So I'm going to try my best. Okay. So I'm going to go straight down like this. See how this comes out. And then I'm going to keep dropping down and keep going out. Keep dropping down. Keep going out. Drop down. Go out. Drop down. Go out. And that you kind of hold that thought process and pattern. Last one. So this is just going to give you a little bit of an idea. Didn't really come out, but it kind of did. So I want to show you if you use that string art feature that I showed you before. Kind of weird, trippy stuff here. And you use that here. You can get a cool artistic component to it and it, it would look a lot nicer in paper that looks a little bit ugly let me show you something through my work here so this is what I'm talking about this kind of feature here the basic idea of string art so if you had this you know what I'm saying something like that if you had this over here and then the same thing over here you could get a really cool effect Okay, so it's just another way to decorate, but the key is, I know that looks a little sloppy, but if you do it on paper, it'd be sick. So you can do that along the edges of your thing with a pencil and you get real fine points. So that's a way for you to decorate it. If you don't like that, don't do that. You can put your name, you can put pictures, you can glue things on. And again, all you're doing at the top is poking little holes and tying it together any way you want. You can get creative with that too. And then you got something ready made to give somebody. Okay? All right. A little bit of math, a little bit of crafts, a little bit of fun. So I hope you enjoyed that. We're going to outro with Chris Isaac again. What a wicked game you play When you make us feel this way What a wicked thing you do 
you tell us what to do what a wicked game you play have to stay at home each day what a wicked thing you do you tell us what to do but I Break your heart, no, I'm gonna be the one I'm gonna let it break your heart, no. We're in this together. Thank you. Okay. Ms. Bat signing out. Aloha.